Ministers, colleagues, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, good afternoon. It's a pleasure for me to be here today to speak on such an important subject. I thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to participate in this ceremony, which marks a truly landmark agreement between our countries. It was just a few months ago when we witnessed in Ottawa the signing of this historic agreement on the island of Tartupaluk, Hans Island, settling a long-standing border dispute between Canada and the Kingdom of Denmark. As mentioned by my colleague earlier, this agreement, the result of four years of formal negotiations between Canada and the Kingdom of Denmark, turned the page on a 50-year-old dispute over the maritime boundary in Lincoln Sea the sovereignty of Tartupaluk, it also establishes a boundary line on the continental shelf beyond 200, 200 nautic miles in Labrador Sea. The new boundary spans a total distance of more than 3,000 kilometers and is the longest and continuous maritime border in the world. As Canada's ambassador to the Kingdom of Denmark, I would like to share a few reflections on the importance of this agreement not only at the national or country level, but also its significance on a broader international scale. In practical terms, the outcome of four years of dedicated negotiation is an equitable resolution to our outstanding boundary issues, a win-win for our countries. The agreement is also very much in the spirit of the 200, uh, 2008 Ilulusat Declaration, in which we committed to the orderly and peaceful settlement of overlapping claims in the Arctic. But there is even more to it. Dividing Tartupaluk and creating a land border demonstrated to the world our mutual willingness to compromise and resolve disputes like the good friends, partners, and allies we are and have been for many years. We thank the governments of Denmark and Greenland for their unwavering spirit of collaboration. This symbolism is important and, in my view, holds broader implications and potential. This willingness of countries to come together and, in spite of differing or contrary views, even on issues as sensitive as sovereignty and territorial disputes, resonate more than ever in the current geopolitical climate where we see increased polarization of positions and perspectives. It was a commitment to and trust in the rules-based international order that helped us to reach the favorable outcome, a system not based on hegemony or brinksmanship, but on accepted and agreed rules, norms and standards, and transparent processes to help us navigate through disaccord to resolution. At a time when we see some actors moving away from this approach, this agreement demonstrates the value of a strong rules-based international system. Canada works to reform and strengthen a rules-based international order where the force of law and now the law of force will prevail. It is my hope that this agreement serves a modern example and reminder to this, that the system works and is our best mechanism for resolving international dispute peacefully and strengthening cooperation. It is also about what comes next. Following the signing of this agreement, the government of Canada, Denmark, and Greenland signed a joint declaration in which they reaffirmed the ties that unite them and the desire to increase cooperation between Canada and Greenland in areas such as culture, trade, climate, and mobility, to mention just a few. This ambition builds on the formal and informal ties that have been forged over the years at many levels between Canada and Greenland. These relationships are the foundation on which our collaboration will grow in the coming years guided by a spirit of people-to-people -people partnership across various sectors. 
And the presence uh, today and during this conference of three premiers from Canada is a good example of that. The, the Arctic Circle Greenland Forum is an ideal forum to continue to build on that momentum and capitalize on the presence of leaders from across a range of sectors with deep connections and interests in Greenland and the Arctic. Finally, for those interested in the legal dimension of Arctic cooperation, I would encourage you to attend tomorrow's panel, the historic agreement over Tautupaluk and Silence, Lincoln Sea and Labrador Sea Continental Shelf. My colleague, Michel Campbell, who was closely involved in the negotiations which led to this agreement, will be presenting along with our Greenlandic and Danish counterparts. I, I encourage you all to attend this session as I believe it will be quite fascinating. Thank you, and I look forward to the discussion that will follow.